Death Battle is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy today at expressvpn.com slash battle. Heroes come in many different forms. Some are heroic protectors of justice, and others are the teachers who guide us toward a brighter future. And sometimes they're both, like Obi-Wan Kenobi, the Jedi Master of the Galactic Republic from Star Wars. And Kakashi Hatake, the sixth Hokage of the Hidden Leaf and mentor to Naruto. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. On the distant planet of Tatooine lived an elderly hermit known as Old Ben, his heart heavy with regret and stories to tell. Cause he wasn't just some crazy old goot, he used to be a badass samurai space wizard. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now that's a name I've not heard in a long time. Ah, I love a good Obi-Wan liner. Hello there. As a child, Kenobi was inducted into the Jedi Order, warrior monks training in the Force over the course of their lives. And he was trained by the one and only Liam Neeson. Well, in, until he was murdered by Space Satan. Though not before they discovered a child of prophecy in Obi-Wan's future pupil, Anakin Skywalker. I have a bad feeling about this. Eventually, Kenobi rose to the top ranks of the Order, becoming a Jedi Master. Just in time for two back-to-back -back galactic wars. Sounds like fun when you've got his classic lightsaber, which can cut through basically anything with enough force. Get it? Including the duranium armor of General Grievous, which can tank volleys from starfighter cannons. It's an elegant weapon for a more civilized age. Cause, you know, mutilating and decapitating people left and right is way more honorable. Kenobi has studied seven forms of lightsaber combat and is the undisputed master of Form 3, Suresu. Which is all about defense and waiting for your opponent to make a mistake to land a finishing blow. He's so skilled, he can beat Sith Lords in just seconds. But Kenobi's most powerful weapon, or better put, ally, is the Force, an energy that exists almost everywhere. Jedi can tap into the Force to manipulate the world around them. Like throwing stuff around with telekinesis. Everything from pulling down an airship to crushing someone else's organs. While Kenobi prefers a more direct dueling approach, his power in the Force is nothing to scoff at. Many years after his time, he was explicitly compared to Jedi Knight Kip Duron, who could move a micro-singularity with a thought. Speaking of thoughts, he can mess with yours with the Jedi mind trick. Like if he wanted to, he could get jizz stuck in your head. Boomstick, gross. What? It's a type of music. Those aliens at Jabba's palace were playing it. They're called jizz whalers. Huh, I bet Disney was real happy to learn about that one. Kenobi's force abilities also include protective fields, illusions, and two to minus, a technique for absorbing and redirecting energy attacks. Even without a lightsaber. Oh, also, uh, he can see the future. To a certain extent, Jedi can glimpse the distant future through focus meditation. In battle, the force can guide their movements, predicting danger in advance. Kinda like a space spidey sense. Exactly. With their incredible skill in the force, Kenobi and Skywalker became a formidable duo. Obi-Wan ranked up even more and became a general. He's a badass space pilot who can dogfight at near light speed. According to an official novel, he can even react down to the nanosecond. I don't know, Wiz. I've seen the movies and Jedi have never done shit like that. Well, other mediums have greatly expanded upon Jedi capabilities. Some are even powerful enough to hold together entire planets. Obi-Wan has fought an army while blindfolded, endured a blast from a starfighter, and battled the Sith Anakin Sky- uh, I mean, Darth Vader! That's when he had to break out his most OP move of all, the high ground! By standing just a few feet above an opponent, Obi-Wan gains enormous extra powerfulness. He even warns you about it. Server Anakin, I have the high ground. It's foolproof. Uh, not exactly. Remember how Darth Maul had the high ground way back when? Against Obi-Wan himself? Where do you think he learned such an awesome move? Only Sith Satan could think of something so deadly. Uh-huh. Either way, Obi-Wan sadly failed where it mattered most. Ooh, that's definitely gonna be an F on the old Jedi report card. 
See me after class for an epic boss battle on a lava planet. But defeating his fallen student is no small feat. Anakin could telekinetically move starships fast enough to intercept hypersonic missiles. Based on the scale of this dreadnought and the distance it moved, this would need an energy over 21 megatons of TNT. And that was when he was a newbie! He basically became the most powerful Jedi and Sith in Space Wizard history! However, Kenobi is extremely dedicated to his strict Jedi code, potentially to a fault. It's debatable if he ever learned from this mistake. After all, he told Luke Skywalker that the only way to ever become a Jedi would be to kill his own father. And he even tried to trick him into never figuring out that fact in the first place. Dick move, Obi. Dick move. But even in his worst moments, Obi-Wan Kenobi always fought for the sake of others. He would battle his Dark Apprentice one last time, sacrificing his life in service of a new hope. And then he became a ghost! Don't ruin the moment. Strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Shinobi, Hokage, Mentor, Friend, and Porn Addict! Kakashi Hatake is all of these, and generally a pretty relaxed guy for someone raised as a ninja assassin. You wouldn't know it at first glance that his childhood sucked balls, like when his dad committed seppuku because he saved his friends instead of prioritizing a mission. In the shadow of disgrace, this cruel methodology of the ninja and his father's great mistake tore young Kakashi apart. Reminds me of my dad. What was his great mistake? He called it Boomstick. Oh. <clears throat> Despite his hardship, Kakashi proved himself a prodigy, becoming a genin at age 5, a chunin at age 6, and a jonin at age 12. For those of us who don't speak anime, he might as well have been doing ninja rocket science in the womb. He quickly mastered the use of chakra, a form of spiritual energy within all individuals that ninja can shape and weaponize. This is ninjutsu. He can walk up walls, heal wounds, and even make clones of himself. Plus, he's a master of taijutsu, aka punching people. But his deadliest technique of all is the 1,000 years of death! The village secret finger jutsu! Ah! A thousand years of death! Oh, that's gonna get you on a list. Naruto's like 12! Chakra can also be molded into nature itself, and Kakashi can use it for numerous elemental attacks. Sure, he can shoot fireballs or dunk you with water, but his favorite is lightning. Lightning zaps, lightning clones, lightning dogs? That's awesome! How do I get one of those? He's even invented a lightning ninjutsu technique, the Chidori. By gathering electric chakra into his hand or a kunai, he becomes capable of piercing just about anything. Even a bolt of actual lightning! Take that, nature! Man triumphs over you once again! This is where Kakashi's own Chidori got its moniker, Raikiri, Lightning Cutter. Ooh, now I know what I'm gonna name my lightning dog! The Chidori does have a downside, though. Its speed and power are so great, they give the user tunnel vision and make the attack generally uncontrollable. Basically, once you kick on the gas, you're zooming straight ahead, no matter what happens. Although, Kakashi I just the thing to fix it. Long story short, he was drafted into a war alongside his friends Rin and Obito. Jet went down and Kakashi lost an eye, so Obito handed over one of his when he decided to sacrifice his life. Holy shit, why don't I have any friends like that? Liz, give me your eye. No. I'll give it back, I promise. Obito's eye wasn't an ordinary eye. He was in Uchiha, and this was a Sharingan. With his Sharingan, Kakashi not only got some control over his Chidori, but he can see a person's chakra, predict their movements, dupe your brain with genjutsu, and even copy jutsu techniques. He's such a filthy plagiarist that he's stolen over 1,000 jutsus in 14 years. Although since Kakashi is not in Uchiha, he can't exactly turn the Sharingan off. And then Rin jumped in front of his Raikiri and kicked the bucket too. Man, this guy can't catch a break! And yet, unimaginable loss is exactly what is needed to unlock the Sharingan's next stage, the Mangekyo Sharingan. Oh yeah! With the Mankey Eye, he can cast Kamui, basically sucking objects or people into another dimension. Sure, it uses up a lot of his chakra pool, but it's a pretty clever instant win move. The concept of trauma granting new power fascinates me. So, I've stolen Boomstick's entire beer hoard and placed it in a secure room with 200 tons of TNT. <laughs> Wait, what? No! Oh, you monster! What have you done? Do you feel anything? Just thirsty, sober, and punchy. P punchy? 
Next round's on Wiz. Well, for Kakashi, everything sort of worked out in the end. He became a teacher, and this new generation of ninja helped him learn that his dad was right all along. Friends do come first, unless they blow up all your beer. Wake up! Oh, uh, he's held his own against top-tier ninja like Zabuza, Pain, and even his old friend Obito. Back from the dead and evil now, because why not? Kakashi can definitely compare to fellow ninja master Jiraiya, who can blow up mountains. That takes over 18 megatons of TNT. And he's caught and sliced lightning. Based on the distance it moved before he caught it, he must have reacted within 70 microseconds and moved over 2,000 times the speed of sound. Sounds like ninja president material to me! Not too shabby for a guy who likes to read porn in public. Did I forget to mention that? Because he totally does. Kagashi of the Sharingan is nothing if not full of surprises. Right now, all I can give you is just death. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, you know what's the best friend for teachers like these two? Beer! This episode of Death Battle is super special because it's sponsored by my favorite beer, Miller Lite. It's tough connecting with friends while we're all stuck at home, but as the original light beer, Miller Lite has always been there to bring people together through Miller time. Even now. Take it from me, every day's a good day to bust out a can of old school Miller. We all know there's nothing better than cracking open a few cold ones with your pals, but even when an evil virus is trying to take over the world, having a Miller Lite next to you easily makes every day that much better. Miller Lite tastes great and is less filling than other beers. Therefore, it won't get in the way of enjoying time with other people, including webcam calls. Yeah, pretty handy for a lightweight like you, huh, Wiz? Definitely. Wait, what? And let's be real, what else is gonna fuel these crazy versus debates? Miller Lite, the original light beer. While you're home, enjoy a classic. Available for delivery today. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories and 3.2 carbs for 12 ounces. So grab one for yourself, cause right now it's time for a death battle! Another happy landing. Huh? Hello there. Hold it. You're in Konoha territory. I have some questions, if you'll come with me. You want to go home and keep reading your book. I want to go home and keep reading my book. After I kick your ass! enough? Well now, you've fallen for the deadliest stratagem we ninja know. One thousand years of death. Don't try it! I have the high ground! Oh. Oh. I guess I have the high ground. Oh, I don't think so. But I see you. Obi-Wan, they betray you.
uncivilized. KO! Well, Kakashi may have been able to beat Obi-2, but he just couldn't handle Obi-Wan. <laughs> Got him. Kakashi's wide array of moves certainly kept Kenobi on his toes, but the Jedi's arsenal was far more powerful and versatile than you might think. Yeah, like how Chakra is an internal life energy with a limited supply, but the Force is external and everywhere. Obi-Wan couldn't exactly run out of it, and Kakashi couldn't copy Force techniques, because, I mean, he's using external Force, not internal Chakra. Totally different. As for brute power, Ninja Mountain Busting and Anakin's Dreadnought Telekinesis were fairly comparable. However, Kenobi matched Anakin's force power well after he had become far stronger than that. This is the chosen one we're talking about here. Other Jedi have done some crazy stuff, like throwing a fleet of Star Destroyers out of a solar system in seconds and stopping a whole planet from going kaboom. Oh, and you know how Obi-Wan tore apart Grievous' armor with his bare hands in Revenge of the Sith? The same armor designed to survive starship cannons. It withstood a blast that annihilated a subterranean city and almost collapsed the surface of a planet. I seriously doubt Obi is physically strong enough to rip that armor apart, but apparently the Force is. Even Kamui wasn't a reliable option, since Kenobi's reaction speed was nearly 70,000 times faster than Kakashi's. More than quick enough to avoid Kamui, especially with his precognition. But we can hear you shouting in the back, what about Kakashi's dual Mangekyo Sharon gun that Obito gave him? And the perfect Susano? It's difficult to justify granting those to Kakashi at all, because they aren't really his. He could only use them when Obito's spirit briefly possessed his body. Even if he did, the results probably wouldn't change much. Remember that Kip guy who moved a black hole? Yeah, he was directly compared to Obi-Wan by Luke himself. If we're to take that at face value, this means Kenobi could theoretically call upon the Force to exert nearly 14 petatons of TNT. Way more than what Kakashi was packing. And even then, Obi-Wan could just crush his organs. Shit, man, don't mess around with Jedi. I know it can seem strange to hear about Jedi being this powerful and deadly, but think of it this way. Part of the reason why the Jedi Code is so strict is because of this immense power at their fingertips. The Code tries to keep them, uh, civilized in a way. But when you enter a death battle, throw those morals out the window. We're looking for who wins a no-holds-barred fight to the death. Kakashi had many impressive tools, tricks, and techniques, but Kenobi's brilliant speed, overwhelming force, and greater level of power won this bout. In the end, Obi-Wan. The winner is Obi-Wan Kenobi. From a certain point of view. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Death Battle. If you want the battle music for yourself, you can get it by clicking the link down below. And if you want to watch more stuff, check the boxes right over there.